Hey guys, welcome back to On The Workbench. So today we're up in the standard gauge room and we are going to be working on some enhancements to our standard gauge buildings. So the standard gauge buildings are pretty much these tin plate buildings and that's pretty much what you get with them. Uh, we're gonna enhance them a little bit with some lighting and other things and uh, talk about those uh, steps today. But our main uh, thing on this video is going to be about the Just Plug Lighting System from Woodland Scenics. If you're not familiar with it, we're going to talk about it, all the components of it, how it kind of works. I used it extensively on my old gauge layout downstairs, and I'm also going to use it up here on my standard gauge layout because I just like it and it works really well. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So uh, let's do this. All right, so the building we're gonna be working on today is the 436 power station. This is the little power station um, um, that Lionel made. And you can see it's just a tin plate building. Um, it's wide open, windows are wide open, right? And uh, it just has this little uh, skylight uh, that goes on the top here. And that's pretty much it, right? But we wanna light this building up and do a couple other things to it uh, to make it come alive a little bit. Uh, but the thing about the standard gauge buildings is because all these windows are just sort of stamped uh, template, right? They're all open. And you can see inside the building, which means you're going to see all the wires and everything that's going on inside there, which we don't want to see when it's all lit up. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do uh, something that I've done in other buildings before um, if they don't have sort of frosted windows. Um, and that is we're going to put a, a covering over all these openings that makes them translucent but uh, sort of like frosted windows where you can't really see through them and what we're going to use for that is a vellum and so I usually just go on Amazon and uh, you know just get some vellum I like the thick stuff this happens to be um, 105 pound vellum but you can use whatever you want to but um, you can get a pack of these um, comes in just normal letter size sheets of this vellum and really what it is is just uh you know it's a uh, translucent right you can light can pass through it but you can't really see through it it's like a frosted window and what we're going to do is put it behind all these windows and doors and everything so that you can't see the wires and everything that are going on on the inside of the building so pretty simple so all you really do is you take a sheet of vellum and then you just lay it over the front where you want to uh cover and then you just mark it with a pencil and then you just take a scissors and cut it out like I did here. So this is a sheet that's ready to go on the front side here. It will cover the three windows and the doors. And then I did the same thing on the sides here with these and just cut them out. You want to make them a little bit bigger than the windows or doors so that you can um, fasten them somehow on the building itself. And that's all you're going to do. On the skylight here, what I did was I actually took a piece of vellum and I uh, folded it and made a little seam so that uh, it'll fit inside here really nicely. And then if you look at it from this side, right, it fits all against the grating here. So all we have to do then is have a way to fasten it on the inside. Now you could use glues if you wanted to, but you know, glues, I don't like to use glues on any of my stuff that I don't need to because I don't want to damage it. I don't want to damage the finish. If I ever want to resell it in the future, I want it to be basically like brand new. So one of the big things I, I use on my layout is hot glue. Um, I, I've used this Woodland Scenic hot glue gun for, I can't even tell me how many times I've used this uh, glue gun. And the great thing about hot glue is it doesn't actually damage the surface of whatever you're gluing to. It just sort of sticks to it, but um, with just a tap, it will break right off and then leave an undamaged surface. So I use it for figures down on my um, O-Gage layout, like putting them on top of uh, plastic accessories, operating accessories, things like that. But if I ever wanted to sell that accessory, I could just take it all off. It would all come off and clean off really nice and the accessory would still be like new. So that's why I like hot glue. The other thing you can use if you don't like the hot glue or you don't have that is um, uh, shipping tape works really good. So the 3M uh, Scotch heavy duty shipping tape. Now, 3M makes different types of shipping tape. 
you don't want the packaging tape because that will not stay. Uh, that will not stick permanently. The shipping tape will. This is super sticky stuff. So when you put this on, it will actually, it won't peel off like over time on the inside and then your vellum falls out on inside of your building and everything, all that kind of stuff. So you won't have to worry about it. So if you are gonna use a tape, you can use any kind of tape. This stuff is not cheap, this uh, Scotch shipping tape, but if you do use it, um, it will stick and you don't have to worry about it falling off. Um, I think Gorilla makes the same type of tape and stuff, but I don't think it's any less expensive. Um, so obviously I have a, a bias towards 3M, so. But um, yeah, you can use anything you want there. So if you use the tape, you just sort of cut a little piece on the edges of your vellum and then you just sort of slap it on the inside there. If you're gonna use hot glue, then what you do is you can just put tabs of glue wherever you want them. So for instance, on our skylight here, I don't need to put the glue on the underside of it and stick it. What I can do is just to keep it down, put a tab of little dot of glue right there and right there right at the stress seam where it has to fold and then at the top along the edge a little bit and that will hold this in here and it'll hold it nice and tight against this uh, piece of metal here for the uh, skylight and then we'll do the same thing on the inside so let me uh, just tack these all down and then we'll come back and see what they look like all right so if you look at it from the top here Looks really nice, right? Looks like the uh, windows or the glass is right against the uh, the metal framing. And you can see on the inside here, it's just uh, a dab here, a dab at the end, and one, two, three, one, two, three, and that holds it in. But again, the best part about this is I could pop this right out. All this glue would pop right off of here. You wouldn't even know it was ever there because uh, it doesn't actually damage the surface. And that's all you need to do. So I just need to put uh, two little panels on the ends here and that will finish out the skylight and that'll be done. And then you can do the same thing on the buildings. Now the buildings may be a little difficult depending the access you have inside of them. This one has pretty good access on the inside. So uh, if the glue gun fits in there, great. Um, if the glue gun doesn't fit in there, that's when you would revert to sort of your shipping tape or you know whatever you're gonna use to hold it in. I wouldn't advise using uh, some, uh, any kind of glue that damages surfaces though. That's just uh, not necessary. You can do it other ways and then you won't wreck your, uh, your item, whatever it happens to be. So let me uh, get all these pieces of vellum mounted on the inside in here and then we'll talk about the lighting system. All right guys, so there's kind of what it looks like once you have your um, vellum over your windows. You see I have it on the skylight too up here. And then I have my LED lighting that's in here, which we'll talk about in a second. But the thing, nice part about this is, we'll show you this, is I can, if I want to, I can dim this down and make it as bright or as dim as I want to on the inside or the outside. Or same thing with the skylight. If I want to dim that down and turn down the skylight, make it a little less or higher, just depending what you want and how many LEDs you put inside the system. So. And this is part of that just plug lighting system we're gonna talk about in a second. But that is the end result. So what I did here is I actually used a, a different color LED up here on the skylight than I did on the main body. So, and you can play with it. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it that way. Maybe I wanna make the, the whole thing sort of yellow, amberish, or just wanna keep the skylight as that portion of it and leave the rest of it like uh, white you know, on the inside. But there's our first step in our powerhouse. Uh, so let's talk about the just plug lighting system next. And then we're going to do one more extra little upgrade to this building that uh, should be pretty cool too. Okay, so let's talk about lighting. So most of the buildings made, um, except for probably in the last couple of years, maybe from um, Woodland Scenics themselves or Menards, are not LEDs. They're incandescent uh, lit buildings if they do have lighting in them at all. Some older buildings may not have any lighting so you may want to add lighting which is why you'd use this system or all the buildings made uh, that have incandescent lighting in them. So incandescent lighting has a lot of drawbacks right generates heat sometimes melts things uh, it's uneven lighting usually where they have to place them inside the buildings sometimes they only replace put one bulb in because there's they draw so many amps of that they don't want to have too many lights in the building, so it's uneven lighting in the building. 
uh, and then they do draw a lot of amps, so which means you gotta have a transformer and go through all this stuff. So they're just, uh, incandescent lighting is just not the greatest in the world. So obviously we wanna move to LED lighting, which is uh, much better as far as being able to place the LEDs where you want them. You can get better coverage in the buildings, uh, a lot less power uh, used with LED lighting. Um, so there's all kinds of advantages to them and just um, Woodland Scenics came out with this system called Just Plug, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's you're just plugging things together. There's no splicing or, or soldering or coming up with uh, boards for dimming and all this other kind of stuff. Yes, you can do that. And yes, you can go on Amazon and get cheap stuff if you want to. Um, and if you like that stuff, go for it. You, if you know me and you see my videos, you know that I try to do everything the simplest way and easiest possible. And I don't like to do all that stuff like making my own electronic boards and going through all that stuff when there's something readily available out there in the industry already. And I'm trying to support these businesses so they don't go out of business, right? And they keep making stuff for trains. So that's why I do it. And so when I stumbled upon this system when I was doing my O-Gage layout, um, I thought it was really uh, easy to use um, and I used it extensively down there. And so we're gonna do up here in the standard gauge. And that building I was just showing you was lit by this system. So let's talk about the components of it and how it kind of works. So first of all, we have the power supply. You gotta have something to power it, right? So they sell the power supply and you can uh, light up to 50 light hub ports. And we'll talk what those are in a second, but one power supply can light up to 50 of these ports. Um, and this kind of works like in a daisy chain fashion right here. So this has to plug into something, right? And you plug it into either an expansion hub or a light and hub set. Now it just depends how many LEDs and lights you're doing. If you're doing more than what a light and hub set can handle, then you have to use an expansion hub. So the expansion hub gets its power from the power supply and this hub can then power other expansion hubs. So I could have a whole string of these expansion hubs. And then what happens is the light and hub set actually plug into a port on the expansion hub. And then the lights actually plug into the port on the light hub. And that's where you have your dimming controls and everything else on the light hub. They also have this thing called a port sharing device. So this is new. I didn't have this when I was doing my O-Gage layout. But the port sharing device allows you to then uh, expand the ports on the light hub. So the light hub has four ports on it normally. So that would be four LEDs you could plug in there. But if you plug a port sharing device into one of those ports, then you can plug, you can get up to four lights per port. So that'd be 16 LEDs per light hub instead of four if you use four of these port sharing devices. Now there's some caveats to that and we'll talk about, but that was a new feature they came out with where you could where you could um, plug four into one now into your light hub. And then they also have uh, something new they came out with. Uh, I, I don't know when they came out with this, but again, it was way past when I had done my old gauge layout, which is the sequencing light hub, which lets you do um, you know, like a chasing sequence with your lights too, if you want to. So that's kind of cool. And you can control the speed uh, um, of which ones that you want to uh, have chase. So that was something new that they added to the system. And then of course you have your actual lights. So you've got uh, LED stick on lights and they have these in all kinds of sizes and, and colors. So this is like warm white and yellow you see right here. These are the bigger LED stick ons. They have uh, nano ones, very small ones. Um, and I think they have like I think they have red and blue too and some other colors like if you were putting them say inside vehicles or something like that. They also create actual street lights that are pre-made, O-gauge street lights, street lamps. You've seen them on my O-gauge layout and they're, they're um, pre-made, pre-wired and again they just plug into this lighting system right here. And then they have these things uh, that you can get are extension cables. There's two types. There is a uh, male to male. So that's for connecting uh, expansion hubs together from one expansion hub to the other. Now it does come with a cable already, but if you need an extra, another one, 
Um, you can buy extra uh, male to male cables and then they also have extension cables male to female if you need to make the the length longer. So let's say you had a, uh, two expansion hubs underneath your layout and you needed one in one area and one pretty far away you could use these connecting cables to connect them all. Now of course you could easily just get wire and uh, solder it and go through all that. But again, the point of this system is it is just plug and you don't have to do any of that. And that's why they sell all these different types of cables and everything to go with it if you want them. However, they do sell splicer plugs if you do want to do easily splice wires too. If you've cut something off and you just want to use your own wiring. So these are just, these are nothing special. These have been around for years from other manufacturers. They're just... Uh, spring-loaded splicer plugs, but they have those also too that you can get with the system. And then they have they have little lights like gooseneck light, uh, lights that you can add on to buildings on the outside. So like on the outside of factory warehouses or, or stuff that have those gooseneck uh, lamps uh, that you've seen on buildings, right? They have those little things you can put on, which I've used on some of the buildings also on my old gauge, gauge layout. So they have a whole series of uh, street lamps and stuff that are part of the system that you can use and to plug that all in. So let's uh, let's diagram this out so you can kind of see how it all works. All right, so like I said, it's kind of like a daisy chain. So you have to start somewhere, right? So uh, basically you start with your power supply, right? And that's that little brick I showed you. And that has to plug into something to power it. So the way it works is, let and let's do like a medium sized system here. So we're gonna do um, four expansion hubs. So these are the expansion hubs. And their purpose is just like a, to be a splitter or a distribution block. That's all they really do. So you have to plug your power supply into one of these expansion hubs, right? And then off of the expansion hub, it has uh, four ports. So there's an in and an out off of this expansion hub, right? So that would be the in, right? And then the out would go to the next in, and then there'd be an out here that goes to the next in, and an out here that goes to the next in. And all this is doing is supplying the power supply to these expansion hubs, and that, that's all it's doing, right? So you've got an in and out power supply ports. And you can keep adding as many expansion hubs as you want to as your needs grow, okay? But we haven't done anything with the lighting yet. So now on this expansion hub, each one of these has one, two, three, four ports on it. Okay, and these ports are for the light hubs. So all you're going to do is plug your light hubs into your expansion ports. So if I had four expansion ports, okay, that gives me 16 light hubs that I can plug into my expansion ports. And so the light hubs would be next, right? We're going to have our light hubs. And you're going to have a whole bunch of those, right? So I would have 16 of these light hubs basically going and all you do is you plug your light hub, there's, there's a uh, power supply in on your light hub and that's just going to go from one of your ports on your expansion hub into your light hub. So you know whether it's like one of these could power all four of these light hubs, right? So I'm just going to use one of these just as an example. Let's say two would go to that one, three goes over to here, and then you got four going all the way over to that one. So this one expansion hub is powering all four of these light hubs. Now on the light hubs is where you're plugging in your LEDs and also where each of the light hubs has little uh, dials on them where you can adjust the brightness for that port. So it's not by LED, it's by port. So now that I have that, I can plug in my lighting. And so depending if you're using, you know, just uh, the stick on lights, right? Or whatever, you're using the street lamps, the pre-made street lamps will dictate like how many of these ports you have to use. Now, if you're just using a light hub, straight light hub with a, 
an LED, then you get four LEDs out of each light hub. So I've got, you know, one, two, three, four ports, four LEDs. Okay, so I've got four ports per light hub, and I can plug four of these stick-on LEDs straight into those hubs, and each individual one I can dim to whatever brightness I want with the little controls on the bottom there. But like I said, uh, I think Woodland Scenic realized that people didn't need to dim uh, individuals necessarily, and they came out with this uh, port sharing device, which is just a plug with four ports on it. So what that means is the port sharing device, so we're gonna just put a port sharing device here. Okay, so on these port sharing devices, what they do is it allows you to connect one of these port sharing devices to one of the ports on the light hub. And then this port sharing device now has one, two, three, four inputs for LEDs, okay? So now I can actually plug four LEDs into one port, and that one port is controlled by that dimmer. So basically, whatever I set this brightness to, all four of these will be the same. So that's the caveat to it. You can't individually control all four of these separately, these LEDs, but you, uh, most of the time when you're just lighting up a building or something, you probably want them all the same brightness anyway. Unless they were on different floors and you're trying to give an illusion of like, you know, some of the offices don't have lights on and some do or something like that. What you could do is separate them out onto two different ports if you wanted to, you know, put a couple of these on one floor, a couple on a second floor, you know, and then set the brightness that you wanted to. But this actually saves you from buying uh, another port, right? So if you think about it, you get four lights per port. So you get 16 per port uh, on a light hub if you did the port sharing device. And the port sharing devices are half the cost of the light hub. So it's, you know, from a money standpoint, it makes more sense. Okay, so now that you have those, then you've got your little individual stick-on LEDs, whatever they may be, that you have in your building. And, you know, each one of these would go to an LED. Okay, and that's how the system kind of works. It's pretty simple. And like I said, instead of a light hub, if you wanted to use a sequencing light hub and using chasing lights for something, maybe you're doing, I don't know, an amusement park thing or something and you want a chasing lights or something, whatever you were using it for, you can switch out the standard light hub for a sequencing light hub and then you have control over the sequencing of the lights. Now, one thing to keep in mind, even though the package says on it on the package that you can with the power supply that you can power up to 50 light hub ports. They're talking about these down here, these light hubs, right? That's 50 of those that you can, um, 50 ports, right? So if you count up all the ports of your light hubs, that's how many ports that it um, su uh, will supply before it maxes out, right? And you can see it has a 1000 uh, milliamp max on this, uh, power supply. But uh, it's not just the ports, right? So uh, if you think about it, before it would have been four LEDs on here, and now you've got 16 if you're using the port sharing device. So the calculation is, a, is sort of a little off. You have to sort of uh, play with it. Now, when you run out of power, obviously things are not gonna work anymore, so it's pretty self-explanatory. I only have two of these total on my old gauge layout and 98% of everything on that layout that is lit is by the just plug system. So, and I'm not running out of uh, power supply and I didn't split it into two just because I needed to. I just got tired of counting to be honest with you because there were so many combinations that I just said, I'll just split it in two and then I'll never have to worry about running out of power. So I just have two of them down there and they're split into two halves on the layout. Um, the other thing you have to remember are, these are individual LEDs here. So if you were just counting these up, you could probably count them and say, okay, I'm getting close to my max for the power supply. But some of the LED lights, depending what they are, 
actually have two lights per plug. So some of the street lights uh, that you buy will come in packs of two. So all the street lamps, I've got the, um, oh, the wood pole ones that have the little goosenecks on them. I've got some of those, and I've also got the old style fashion iron ones um, that were kind of the gooseneck too, uh, you know, lamps and stuff like that. I've got those two types down on the layout. They come in packs of two. And the way these work is each of the two lights um, basically have wires, a pair of wires coming out of the bottom of them, and they actually go to one single plug. So they'll give you this little connector that basically you tie them together is really what happens. Each of these are tied together. And then they go to a single plug. And that single plug goes into one of the ports somewhere. So you're actually getting two lights on one single plug. And that's the way their street lamps work. It's because the, uh, I'm not sure why, the, the wires are very thin on these and uh, I'm not sure how many milliamps these are pulling, but um, they're pretty bright on the, the uh, old cast iron ones. Um, these have very tiny LEDs on these ones that have just the gooseneck on the wood poles. Um, so they're not quite as bright, but you get two for one plug, okay? So it, it always depends on which of the LED lights that you're using in their system, uh, how many ports that you can count up and how many lights you can get on the system. So it gets a little complicated because you really, if you're adding up the milliamps is what's gonna tell you if you're exceeding your power supply. So every single uh, LED that you get will have a milliamp rating on it to tell you what it is, right? These are 25 milliamps on these. And then uh, same thing with the street lights and everything else. So if you added that all up and then you see you're getting close to a thousand, then you know you need to get a, a, a second power supply and then start a new, uh, basically a string. But that's kind of how the system works. It just plugs into, uh, everything just plugs into everything else. And uh, you can keep expanding and expanding, you know, right up until you get to the end of your power supply. Now they also make one other piece that I don't usually get, but they do make a switch too. So uh, if you don't want to switch your power supply on and off, they also make uh, a little switch that you can put in the system. Uh, there's a little control port on the expansion hubs and you can plug that switch. It's just a toggle switch that they sell in a little box and that will turn the entire system on and off. Uh, so you can get that too as another accessory if you just want to uh, uh, have a little switch to turn all your lighting on and off on your layout. And that's it guys, that's the Just Plug lighting system. It's I like it a lot. Um, is it the cheapest? No. There Are there cheaper ways? Of course. You can go on Amazon and get uh, cheapo LEDs and all that kind of stuff. But Again, I like supporting the businesses that support our hobby, and I also like quick and easy things, and this makes it nice and quick and easy. The LEDs uh, have a little stick-on tape on the back of them, so they uh, they stick to wherever you put them on, so that's kind of nice. Um, and uh, they also make other things like uh, die-cast vehicles uh, with lighting in them, like headlights and taillights that are part of the Just Plug system. Uh, also that you can just plug into. It's kind of like Menards has the same type of thing. They have a little system where you can plug uh, pre-lit uh, die-cast cars into uh, their their power supplies too. But because they're part of the, uh, because the Woodland Scenics ones are part of the Just Plug system, uh, you just pick any port on here and plug them in and you're good to go. Um, and so that's pretty much it. Um, so let's actually go look at the way I set up this uh, power station building and then we'll uh, talk about the one other um, enhancement I'm going to do to that building and then we'll, we'll take a final look at it. Alright, so there's our building all lit up. You can see I've got my uh, light hub right here and you've got your four little dimmer controls right here. You can see I've got the uh, plugs up here where it's plugging into the... Um, port and then you see the little there's a control thing right here it says control that's where you would plug in that switch that they sell if you want if you just had like say one hub 
and that's all you had and you need to turn it on and off, you can use a switch. Now, you could actually make your own switch if you wanted to. All you have to do is take this wire, snip it, and then solder a switch on here, and that would do the same thing, because you can see right now it just has a jumper in it, which comes with it in the kit. And here's the power supply wire that's just coming in from that, uh, that little power supply that's plugged into the wall. And that's pretty much it. So um, if I want to change the dimming on these, I could. Now, as far as like mounting the LEDs, so what I did here on the top part here for the skylight, I actually used L LEDs that are yellow. Now I haven't mounted these yet. I just put a little tape here just so I could see the position. So you want to, you know, first position your LEDs with maybe some scotch tape or something just to make sure it's lighting evenly where you want it. Because if you put them in the wrong position, it has that uh, the little 3M tape on the back. And once you put it down, it's not going to come off. If it does, uh, you'll ruin it, and then you'll have to get some other double-sided tape or something or glue it down or whatever. So try your position first before you want it. So why is this piece of uh, foam board here uh, that normally wouldn't be? Well, first of all, I needed a way to light, obviously, the skylight, right? And I wanted it to, the light coming up. Because uh, these are sort of directional LEDs, right? They're just pushing the light forward, right? They're not like light bulbs because they're flat LEDs, right? So you want to make sure that you've got them in the right position and the, the light is pointing that way. The other reason I did this is because for the building itself down here, I wanted the light to be even. And if I stuck the lights on the sides of the buildings, it didn't look right, right? It wasn't evenly lighting the building. You had all these hot spots in there. So I did the same thing on the inside, which is the reason I put that foam board there and I just again used a little hot glue to, to put a little piece of foam board but it lets me have a um, horizontal mounting plate on the ceiling so I can push the lights down and point them down inside the building right and so that's kind of why I put that there and so it gives me that twofold thing now if you noticed I used yellow LEDs on the top portion right here right and then I used uh, white ones in the building and so you can mix and match as you want to. I kind of like the look of it because uh, uh, I could switch them out to use the yellow ones in the building too. But I don't know. It kind of looks like, you know, you got the offices down here and then maybe something else going on in the skylight up top with a, a more yellowish look. So I like the contrast of it uh, in this particular case. But I could easily switch these out for yellows, right, and put them in there and see what that looks like too just to get an idea. So you can play with them uh, before you officially mount them in the system. That's pretty much it. That's how it, it looks. And this will look really good once, uh, of course, the lights are all low in the, in the room here and all the buildings are lit around the uh, standard gauge layout here. So I'm going to do this lighting system in all the buildings as I get them. And this is just the first one. Uh, but I think it'll turn out uh, really nice. So remember, put your vellum in or some kind of a material to block from seeing all the wires and everything on the inside of the building if you don't have any detailed interiors. And then uh, it, put your uh, lighting, your LED lighting, and just space it around. Make sure it's pointing the right direction. And then you'll get this nice, even uh, distribution of light, and it'll look really cool. All right, so that's it for the lighting for our building. Now we're going to talk about one other little feature that we're going to add to this power station, which is I think is going to be kind of cool. Uh, which is we're going to add a uh, smoke unit to this one because as you see this is a power station and it has a smokestack on it. So I figured why not put a smoke unit in here because it, it uh, would look cool just kind of smoking along, uh, look like it's generating power. Okay, so the second thing I want to do is I want to put like smoke in this building because it's a power station and it's probably generating some kind of steam or smoke out of the smokestack that's here on the building. Now luckily all these tin plate uh, buildings are all hollow, right? So all this stuff is hollow, wiring can run down here really easily. And so I had a choice of using two different types of smoke units. I, I could use a fan driven one or a sooth. And so I decided to use a sooth on this one because I just wanted the smoke to come out and sort of waft out um, out of the building and not be like just pumping like crazy. Um, and the second thing is because I didn't want to have to worry about it always being out of smoke fluid and then burning out the uh, smoke resistor on a fan driven one. These you don't have to worry about it. If there's no smoke fluid in it, it doesn't matter. It's not going to burn out or anything. So basically inside the building right here 
you can kind of see the wiring runs down the back here from the smoke unit just comes through the hole in the template comes down to the uh, board right here if you can see it right there so this is a, a sooth unit I got from Roystrains.com. That's R-O-Y-Z trains.com. He sells these little smoke units uh, that you can use in buildings or wherever you want to put them, which are really cool. Comes with a little driver board there and you just has double sided tape and then you just got your uh, power and uh, common ground wire coming out of there that you're just going to hook up to a power supply and that's all you have to do. Um, what I did on the top here is I just took the unit and it was a little bit too small for the opening here so what I did is I used cloth automotive tape so if you're not familiar with that stuff that's the stuff that the factories use to wrap uh, the electrical wiring looms in cars um, it's super sticky stuff uh, so once it's once you put it on it sticks to itself and you re it's really hard to remove so but it's a nice cloth uh, tape which has some friction to it so you basically put it, I wrapped it around a couple times just to take up the gap there and then I just slid the unit in here so it's just basically held in there with a, a sort of a friction fit. Wiring goes down to that little board and all you have to do is hook it up to a, a, like the 6 to 14 volt power supply and it'll start smoking once you put smoke fluid in it and you never have to worry about it burning out or anything like that. Uh, and that's all I did to add a little feature onto our power station here. So let me get these LEDs permanently mounted here, get this all together. It will hook up the uh, unit and we'll take a look at what the final product looks like. Alright guys, so there it is. There's the final result there. We've got our lighting in the uh, building right here. we got two different colors going on. And again, you can switch that out if you don't like it to whichever you want once you play with it. We got our SUS unit here smoking out uh, the smokestack here. So pretending like it's generating uh, power or whatever it may be. And that's pretty much it. So a couple little upgrades and uh, it makes your buildings come to life a little bit more. It'll look good at night when this is all lit <clears throat> with all the other buildings and everything on the layout. So just a quick... Uh, uh, shout out to the Woodland Scenics uh, company for the Just Plug system. I personally like it. It's easy to use, plugs everything in. Yes, it does cost a little bit of money, but um, it saves a lot of time. So, And um, that's going to be it. Hey guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, put your comments down below, and I will see you guys next time. Peace, guys.